Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. Today I'm going to be looking at this MSI MPG Z690 Edge Wi-Fi DDR4 motherboard and I also have the, Z the 12900K i9 processor which I will be installing in this board as part of my new PC build. So I've got a few different components. I've got this motherboard, got the processor, got the RTX 3090 which I thankfully managed to get at retail price and um, I have a H500 case which I've already done an unboxing for so feel free to check that out. So we'll have a look at the motherboard first. I've actually already opened the packaging for the i9 processor and I'm just going to show you the box anyway because it's pretty cool. So I chose this board because it supports DDR4 RAM and I didn't really want to spend uh, enormous amounts of money on RAM. And this is I think the top of the range motherboard as far as Z690 and DDR4 goes for MSI. So you know there's a few things missing like it doesn't have Wi-Fi 6E, it has Wi-Fi 6 and I'm guessing that's just a way to get people to spend more money to, on the higher features. I'm sure, I don't see any reason why they couldn't have incorporated a Wi-Fi 6E on a DDR4 motherboard. But anyway, that's uh, for another time. But I've heard good things about the MSI motherboard. I'm using an Asus in my current build, which you guys may have seen in a video I did towards the beginning of the year when I did a PC build after many years. And that's my Ryzen 5 3600 XT on an Asus B550M-K motherboard. Let's not talk about that one right now, let's concentrate on this. So let's have a look around, a quick look around the box. Windows 11 compatible, of course. Uh, TPM 2.0, I'm quite sure that's there because of the Windows 11 compatibility. It has Mystic Light RGB, Lightning Gen 5. So there is a PCI Express slot which supports, which is an X16 slot, which supports uh, Gen 5. And I think you can also boot from that once the Gen 5 SSDs come out. But the problem with I found with all of these boards is that, uh, at least in this range, they only have one Gen 5 port which means one gen 5 x16 port even if a gen 5 ssd comes out you can't remove your graphics card from the gen 5 x16 port because you lose some of the performance by moving it to an x4 or x8 port so it's just something to think about on the left hand side we have nothing exciting on the right hand side nothing exciting and on the back we have lots of blurb about all of the features so we have wi-fi 6 and bluetooth we have audio boost is that five? Uh, 120 decibels audio, whatever, I'm not gonna read all of that. Again, the 128 gigabits uh, Gen 5 lightning port, the direct power design, which is 16 plus one plus one. And I don't know too much about all of this, but one thing I noticed here is that it has use of 75 amp smart power. So I think that's to do with uh, the power the VRMs can handle or something. I'm, I'm, I don't really know too much about it. I'm not gonna pretend I know, but apparently 75 amps would mean that it's better for overclocking. I think the Asus's have something like uh, 80 amps or something like that. But the lower, the one board lower than this one, I've forgotten the name of it, that has a 70 amp. And then I think the MSI Z690 Pro has 60 amps. So I think that board would probably be more than enough for most people anyway. Um, but I just decided to go for this board because I like the uh, built-in panel and also the, the heat sinks for all of the SSDs. <coughs> Let's open up the box. And inside, so we're opening the small box, black box first. And I'm gonna admit, I have actually rearranged some of the stuff inside because I bought this in the UK when I flew back uh, home. I had to uh, you know, just make sure everything was inside. So inside the black box, you just get normally the antennas for the Wi Fi. But the other things you get inside the box are this MSI brush. I guess that could be handy. So we have the antennas for the Wi Fi, set of screwdrivers. Phillips and straight, and that's it inside the box. Like I said, the only thing that comes inside there is actually just the antennas. But I mixed it up when I was putting things back together. So I haven't actually opened the motherboard yet. Just, just to be clear, I haven't opened the package of the motherboard. So, let's take the motherboard out. It's quite heavy to be honest, um, not heavier than my old board. Let's put that inside for a second and see what else is inside. So first and foremost, I normally say bedtime reading, but I'm, I'm sure the motherboard user guide is more useful than most other products. So we will have, a look, have to have a look at that to find out exactly what there is. Quick installation guide. And one thing, just while I'm going through all of this, um, that's definitely bedtime reading. Um, there's actually an offer at the moment for the 31st of December. You actually get a, a some, you can actually claim cashback if you buy MSI motherboards, Z690 motherboards. So have a look at that. I'll try and leave a link in the description. So we've got some M.2 quick release screws, I believe. There's two of those, one here and one here. 
two of those. This I believe is an RGB cable. Split a cable of some sort. I'm not too good with RGB, so I can't tell you more than that. Uh, case badge. Stickers. What is this? Registration card. And then we have, I believe that might be a fan connector. Maybe another RGB cable. And then we have two SATA cables. And here we also have, ah yes, there's a USB flash drive. I'm guessing that's for the BIOS and the MSI logo up there. We're not going to open up all the extras for now. Let's have a quick look around the board. Let's open up the packaging. No trusty kitchen knife today. I'm sure we can take this tape off by hand. There we go. And let's just close this box up for it. that for now. Right, so there's the underside of the board with that new plate for the LGA 1700. And turning it around. There we go. I must admit, it's a very nice looking board. So let's have a look at some of the connections. First, let's have a look at the front panel. So let's just have a quick look at that. Sorry, the back panel rather, the way I don't know. So we have two USB ports. I believe these are USB 2 ports with charging capability. HDMI port, display port. I believe these are USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, so 5 gigabit ports. Sorry, they're all 10 gigabit ports. I just know it's SS USB 10. A USB type, a Gen 2, USB 3.2 Gen 2, that means 20 gigabits, right? And it actually has got a tiny bit of print there, you probably won't see that. Then we have another 10 gigabit port, and then we have, and so this one is particularly for the BIOS, there's a flash BIOS here, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, the Wi Fi antennas, Wi Fi and Bluetooth antennas, then we have a digital, a digital out and other audio connectors there, and then we also have a flash BIOS button on the left. And then, let's have a look at all of the ports. So we have um, a Gen 5 X16, so there's 16 lanes there, and you can't really make out because of the metro outline there, but there's actually 16 pins inside. If you look carefully at these, I'm not sure, I'm going to just angle it back and forth a little bit. You may notice that there's only connectors up to there, so even though it's an X16 slot, both of these, they only house up to X4, so these are X4 ports, right? That's an X1 port. So the X4 port, we'll, we'll take a graphics card, it's just I won't allow you to use all 16 lanes. We're only allowed to use four. And then you can get some boards which have eight. Now, I couldn't find one in this range that had another X16 point. I don't know if they existed in this range or maybe even if they do exist. But some of the more expensive boards do have two PCI Gen 5 slots. So you're able to then utilize this in the future, one of the ports for a Gen 5 SSD. Um, so maybe that way you'd get one full 16X. And even if you have an 8X, it doesn't matter because the, generally the PCI only, uh, sorry, the PCI SSDs only have four lanes, so you'd be able to use a second slot for your Gen 5 SSD, and I'm hoping that both ports will allow you to boot, though we don't know what the case will be with those boards, at least I don't know myself. Then we have the LGA 1700 socket, four DDR4 DIMM slots, and then we have the four SSD, four M.2 SSDs which fit under these heat sinks, and then we have six SATA ports. Now, as far as I know, I believe there may be some sharing of the bus when it comes to the M.2 SSDs and the SATA, so I'm not sure and what that is, but I'll try and find out maybe by the time I do the build and then when I do that, I'll be able to um, talk through how that works. So then we have the typical power connectors, fan connectors, USB headers. There's actually a, this one here, the JTBT1, that is a Thunderbolt 4 header. So that's actually good in, in case in the future we do want to add Thunderbolt 4 expansion card, we can do that and slot it in. Um, I will actually be using a, a a620 cooler with this motherboard and with a 12900k processor. So now that we have a look at this, let's quickly bring the 12900k processor into the picture. Like I said, I've already opened this, um, but it has a nice cool magnetic back. So once you've broken the seal, it's the magnetic back there. And it has a nice hollow design. It's really, really cool design to be honest. Uh, something different for processor boxes for many years. They've been very standard. So we just open this up and it has a cool way to open it. Let me zoom out a little bit so maybe you can see it a bit better. So this opens up like that. And then we have this nice metal disc inside, which says Intel on the front there. 
and then on the side you have these two arrows things on your one side here so to open so right now the box is closed to open the box you line it up and then put it open and inside we have the processor so i think what we'll do while we're here let's just take it out of the packaging completely and let's maybe install it into the motherboard so that would be a good idea right we're going to build the PC, well, we're going to build the PC today anyway. So, let's have a look at this. Let's remove it. Oh, that wasn't the way to do it. Let's take that off. We can remove the plastic cover. So, let's just have a quick look at the pins there. One over here. There we go. And all we have to do is take the CPU out of the packaging. So we just make sure we line it up. Uh, I don't think this can go in the wrong way because the notches on the top and the bottom of the CPU, you might just be able to catch it there on the camera. They're actually different, so it can't go in the wrong way. And we just make sure that it's in securely, it's not moving around. Place this down and pull down the lever. Now, assuming I've done that correctly, which it looks like I have, should be fine. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask and I'll see you in the next one. Please do feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.